Welcome to the Uncle's channel. Thanks for watching today. Now, if there's one thing I keep up with uh, pretty extensively on this channel, it's definitely Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Whether it's the uh, new action figures that are coming out, new potential comics that are coming out, the movies that are coming out, all the games we got last year, upcoming games like based on the uh, last Ronin. Well, one thing I never expected to wake up and see today was we got a brand new TMNT game released today, like a stealth drop that nobody knew anything about. It wasn't a game like we sort of heard about through the grapevine, we we're expecting like, when's it gonna come out? What is it about? None of that. We had no clue this game was happening at all and it just came out today. Now I'm talking about TMNT Splintered Fate. Now Splintered sort of a uh, play on words a little bit because you are searching for Splinter throughout the game and he only appears to you like in a uh, ghost or spirit form. But well, that's the uh, main story we'll get into in a second. But this game here, it's only on Apple Arcade, which is a little disappointing for a lot of players out there. And truth be told, I didn't even have Apple Arcade. I had to download the uh, free trial on my iPhone literally just to play this game. And it lasts for like 30 days, which should be plenty of time for most players to journey through the entire experience here. But there are some hints that might be coming out on the uh, PlayStation as well. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. But what this game is, it's not just your normal uh, TMNT beat em up, even though that's what the uh, screenshots initially look like. This is actually going to be a roguelike game, very much in the vein of Hades. And um, from my playing of it so far, it is nailing the Hades formula like perfectly, like dead on in so many ways. Even down to like some of the art style, like the art style reminds me a great deal of Hades, but especially like the storyline. Yeah, the storyline focuses on a Splinter being taken into an alternate dimension and you're trying to rescue him from that. But every time you do a run in this game, since it's a, a roguelike game, the story advances whether you win or lose, just like it did in Hades, which is great to keep players involved in a game that's pretty much set up to make you lose the majority of times that you play through it, because you're gonna get stronger and stronger with each round that you play through. But let's talk about exactly how this game plays. Now you can choose any of the four main turtles you wanna play as. Leonardo is sort of your uh, standard powerful character. Donatello is your uh, health character, you know, he's got his large HP meter. Michelangelo has like the largest area of attack. And Raphael focuses more on like critical attacks and speed. And so I went through the majority of my runs of Donatello just because on roguelike games where I'm trying to get as far as I can in a particular run to get the most rewards out of it, I usually go if the, the character has the most uh, health or highest HP bar. So Donatello fit like really well for me on that. But regardless of whichever turtle you choose from, you are placed into a room and your goal here is to destroy every single enemy inside that room. You have your basic attack and you have two special attacks and you also have a dodge move or a dash move to sort of jump around the screen a little bit faster. Obviously you have to charge up your special attacks and you do that just simply by attacking with your normal attack. And your special attacks are going to vary between every single turtle. Donatello, he has sort of the uh, helicopter move here where he sort of spins around. He also has like a, a hardened shell move, which, you know, helps to conserve HP and such. And you can actually get different upgrades that swap these out through your experience. So you're not like dedicated to that the whole time. This is just simply what you're going to start out as, as your special moves. But as you're defeating enemies and destroying boxes inside the rooms, you're going to find these little gears and you can save these gears up to buy upgrades for your character or more health for your character in order to prolong the run that you're going on. But all the things that you do buy with the gears, they're not going to be a permanent upgrade. It's just simply upgrades for that particular run that you're on. But gears aren't the only way to upgrade your character on that particular playthrough because at the close of every single level where after you defeat all the enemies, a little pop-up comes up here and it basically shows you three different buffs that you can do for your character. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one, but it's, it's usually three. And uh, it shows you basically different ways that you can increase like its attack power, you can increase their health meter, maybe you can increase like, you know, like a particular buff, like every four attacks, does like a little lightning strike that comes down and attacks some enemies. There's just a plethora of different little upgrades that you can get, and every single time you defeat a room, it's gonna be different upgrades for you to choose from. So every time you defeat a room or beat all the enemies, your character's gonna get stronger and stronger on that playthrough. And so by the time you get to like some of the bosses, or like the mini bosses, your character can get pretty darn powerful as you're working through as long as you choose the uh, correct upgrades as you go. Now this mechanic is borrowed completely from Hades. It's like almost identical to what Hades does as far as your upgrades, even like what some of the upgrades themselves are. It feels like it's borrowed pretty much directly from Hades. Even the control in all of these rooms, as far as like your dashing and your attacking, it feels like directly from Hades. Now Hades won like game of the year when it came out several years ago, and it was probably the best roguelike game that probably ever existed. So when they made this game, they really just sort of went to the source and said, what are all the best aspects of Hades as far as combat wise, as far as upgrades go, as far as currency, as far as story, and let's put it into this Turtles game. And it has transferred over excellently. So the upgrades are going well, the attack is going well, and after you've cleared out like three or four rooms, you finally get to like a little mini boss. So, and the mini bosses do vary depending on your run. It's not the same mini boss every single time. Like sometimes I got like a rat here, sometimes I got like a, a large mouser. 
And so the mini bosses aren't too bad, but it's definitely an upgraded challenge from a normal room. And of course, once you defeat the mini boss, then you can go up there a few more rooms, then you get to go to a merchant, cash in some of those gear that you've been collecting, get yourself well suited to go into the boss battle. And the boss battles are gonna be the same for every single level as far as like level one will always be uh, Leatherhead, you know, the giant mutated alligator. And so when you go into the boss battle, like it's actually a pretty legit boss battle as far as like the boss mechanics or their moves are all mapped out really well. Like Leatherhead has a lot of different moves that he can do here and he can get like into the sewers and you know, dash across it, you know, summon more enemies out to attack you. It's a really fun boss fight as you're going through it. And also when you defeat him, you get what's called an artifact and you can use these artifacts to upgrade your character more permanently. But we'll get to that in just a second. But the main goal here is every time you go through a, a particular run is you want to get as far as you can to defeat as many bosses as you can to get these artifacts. But also throughout your run, you're going to be collecting what are called dragon coins. And dragon coins you do get to cash in when you get back to the layer after you pass away and you can cash these in for permanent upgrades so for our sake of the review here let's say you've gone through the run as far as you can you've collected all these dragon coins you've defeated a couple bosses you get some artifacts on your hands and so now you pass away you head back to the turtle layer here and when you get to the turtle layer you can go over to this little uh little platform here for the little katana laid out and you can cash in all of your dragon coins to get permanent upgrades to your characters and this can be sort of similar to like the buffs you get at the close of every level but these never go away and these are always going to be for your character pretty much forever and so you can get like extra health you can get like regenerative health you can get um, you know extra attack power extra uh, buffs on your attacks and so pretty much anything you can get inside the game you can get as a permanent buff as long as you collect enough dragon coins and so once you do that, then you can go over to the artifacts and you can actually equip the artifacts after you defeat the boss to buff your character even more. And so essentially, every time you play the game, you're gonna get permanent buffs that you can equip when you go back to the lair to make the next run just a little bit easier, to get a little bit further, to get more upgrades, to basically cash in. And so that's essentially how all roguelike games work. But this one does a really good job as far as like allowing the player to feel rewarded. And like I said, the storyline continues inside the game whether you die in a run or not. And so there's always a reward system or the game always feels like it progresses even if you don't actually finish all the way to the last boss because you can get more powerful, you can get more storyline elements. And the story is actually written by one of the um, comic book writers for the IDW comics. His name does escape me at the moment, but it's actually written by someone who's inside the TMNT universe, which is refreshing because a lot of times um, these type of games that you know get stealth drops or sometimes cheaper games don't have like the main writers in it. And so it's got a good writer behind this to give a pretty well developed and fleshed out story here as well. Now, when you're in the turtle layer, not only can you do like, you know, the normal things, like I said, upgrading your character, but also you can sort of explore around here. And there's one little Easter egg that I really enjoy here. So if you go over to the uh, couch here, I believe it was Michelangelo. He was playing the uh, SNES and you can see on the screen that he is actually playing uh, Turtles in Time, which I think is just awesome. It's just a nice little uh, callback, a little homage to their older games. I mean, just stuff like that to me as a fan, goes a really long ways. Now, when you go back to the main menu of the game, of course, you can go through all the different achievements in the game because there's like 30 something that you could unlock. And there's also a multiplayer element, which I was pretty darn excited about at first, but then I realized you can only do multiplayer with like your actual friends. You can't do like random multiplayer to just match with whoever online and, you know, run through a few uh, rounds here. You can only do it with your friends, which um, is a little disappointing because no, none of my friends have Apple Arcade. Most of my friends don't even have like an Apple device at all. Most of them have like Android or a, a PC. And so the number of people that I can actually play with on this game is um, is like pretty much zero. And so I didn't actually get to experience the multiplayer. It seems like it'd be way more fun doing the multiplayer. But even if you don't, like I had a blast going through the single player mode. Now I did mention earlier in the video, this is probably a timed exclusive for Apple Arcade. And it's probably gonna come to like to the PlayStation as well. And the reason I say that is if you go to the Instagram page where they announced the game, they have like three little videos here showing like gameplay and on one of the screens it actually has like different uh, the triangle circle and square as far as like your attack buttons and as far as i know that's like the only playstation is the only one that actually uses those particular keys i mean there might be some off-brand controllers or maybe there's an apple controller out there i just don't know about for the actual apple arcade but um this tends to hint to me anyway this is probably gonna be coming over to the playstation i could be wrong on that but that's my own personal uh, speculation about it and I think when it does come over to PlayStation or maybe even Xbox, it's probably going to be one of those like Game Pass games or one that comes to like PlayStation uh, Plus or things like that. Or it might be like a uh, maybe a $20 game. It's definitely not a $50 game. I mean, Hades was never a $50 game. That was a $20 game. And so I think uh, Splintered Fate would also probably be around that same range because it's definitely carrying on the spirit of Hades, has the same gameplay as Hades. 
I mean, if you loved Hades, you will love this game. It is a well done, good looking game for its style and it plays phenomenally. And so it's a real shame that it's stuck on Apple Arcade because I think a ton of players would really love playing through this game. Honestly, I can't believe they just sort of stealth dropped it. I can't believe they didn't do any announcement for it as far as like leading up to it or trailers, get everybody hyped about it. I, it, it is just mind blowing and baffling to me why they took this particular marketing approach because it's actually a really good game. Usually when games get stealth dropped like this or like mobile only or like Apple Arcade, uh, you know how the quality varies on that kind of stuff. And this is actually a really good game that, like I said, a lot of Hades fans and Turtles fans are pretty much guaranteed to enjoy. But let me know in the comments down below if you're planning on signing up for a free trial of Apple Arcade. Are you even able to get Apple Arcade at all on any of your devices? Are you hoping for it to come to the PlayStation? Let me know about all that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos listed up above. And as always, go out there, find that great game to play. Just simply have a great rest of the day.